Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to User Education. Well, we will uh, continue solving certain problems which I consider to be <coughs> non-orthodox problems. Those problems which you are unlikely um, uh, solving in schools. So these problems are not supposed to be like illustrations to a theory. Um, no, they are actually directed towards forcing you to think creatively, to find some solution which was not actually given to you as a recipe. Like, if you want to do this, you have to do that. No, there is no such things. I'm asking, how do you do this? And you have to basically invent the new way which you may be not really learning at school. Now, the, the purpose of this is obviously to um, kind of train your your mind to, to think creatively outside of the box and whenever some practical uh, problem uh, will rise and you will be able to find its solution even if nobody else before you was able to do that. So this uh, these problems are part of the course called Mass Plus and Problems presented on unizer.com on the website I suggest you to uh, use not only the video but also the textual part because every video, every lecture has its uh, textual representation as well which basically is like a textbook so whenever you, before or after you watch the video read the notes now in many cases I do not really present the solution in the notes I do present it in the lecture but I don't present it in, in the notes I might present some hints how to approach it, in which case it might actually be very interesting if you will first start from the text part of the, um, of, of the lecture and try to solve the problem yourself and then watch the lecture, my solution. Okay, so today we will talk about certain problems in algebra um, and uh, well, let's just start. The first problem is the following. Let's consider you have three numbers which, if summed up, equal to 1. I have to prove that some of their squares greater or equal to one third. Okay. Fine. So that's not obvious, obviously. <coughs> now, if you did not read the textual part and did not really attempt to solve this problem yourself, you can pause the video right now and try to do it. And uh, I will continue with a uh, solution. Um, the easiest part, well, actually there are, I, I found basically two different ways to solve this problem. Now, the first way is the following. Let's square the x plus y plus z equals to 1. So it will be x plus y plus z times x plus y plus z. It's equal to 1. Equal to. Well, let's open all the parentheses. x square plus xy plus xz plus yx. Well, let's put xy plus uh, y squared plus yz plus zx xz plus yz plus z squared equals to 1. Or <coughs> x squared plus y squared plus z squared plus xy and xy. So it's 2xy xz xz plus 2xz plus uh, yz and yz 2yz still equals to 1. Now let's just um, recall very simple thing this is the square of some number, so it's definitely greater than or equal to 0, which is x squared 
minus 2xy plus y squared greater than 0, x squared plus y squared greater than or equal to 2xy, right? So we will have this obvious inequality. And we can say the following. So if I will increase this part, instead of 2xy, I will put a greater one. It will be greater than 1, right? So now x squared plus y squared plus z squared plus. So instead of 2xy, I will put x squared plus y squared, which means I'm increasing the value, right? It will be, as a result, it will be greater than 1. Now instead of 2xz, Similarly, instead of y, we'll use z. So instead of 2xz, I will put x plus square plus z square. And instead of yz, I will put y square plus z square. And that would be greater than or equal to 1, right? Because I replaced smaller value with a bigger one. And this one is equal to 1, 2, 3. 3 x square, 1, 2, 3. 3y three squared, 1, 2, 3. z squared, greater than 1. From which follows that this is greater than 1 third. Proved. Okay. Now, here is another way of doing this thing. Um, which actually I came up first. This seems to be a relatively easy um, kind of proof, but here is maybe a little bit more complicated, but nevertheless, it's interesting. Consider the following thing. x minus a squared plus y minus a squared plus z minus a squared. Now, this is definitely greater than zero because it's sum of squares, right? Okay, which is equal to x square minus two a plus a square plus y square minus two a two a x y a plus a square plus z square minus two a z plus a square equals two x squared plus y squared plus z squared plus uh, 3a squared 1, 2, 3 minus 2a, 2a and 2a so it's 2a times x plus y plus z right? equals x squared plus y squared plus z squared plus 3a squared minus 2a. So, using this, we can say that x squared plus y squared plus z squared greater than or equal to, with an opposite sign, 2a minus 3a squared, right? And let's examine what this actually is. What kind of values this expression takes with different uh, values of a? Well, this is basically a quadratic polynomial, right? Let's just consider it, uh, I don't know, some kind of letter. u is equal to minus 3a squared plus 2a. And let's just draw uh, a graph of this function this polynomial, it's a parabola, parabola with um, directing of its hordes down, right, because it's a minus sign, so it's parabola of this type. Now, uh, obviously the intersection with um, x are obvious if a is equal to zero, then the function u is equal to 0, so this would be 1, 
uh, particular root of this when u is equal to zero. And another is uh, u is equal to zero, that's um, a times minus 3a plus 2. So another would be two-thirds, right? One uh, root is zero and another root is two-thirds. So this is two-thirds. So maximum is in between, between zero and two-thirds, which is one-third. And at one-third it, it would be equal to minus three, one-third square is one-nine plus two-third, which is equal to minus one-third plus one-third is one-third. So this is also one-third. So as we see, this thing is always below one-third. So this thing is always greater than maximum of this one, and maximum is equal to one-third. So this is basically another kind of more, I would say, functional um, proof without any kind of tricks or whatever. So that's just another way of proving this particular thing. Okay, next. Next is as follows. Um, solve the following equation. Okay, how can we solve this equation? Well, first and obvious way is have another variable and relative to this variable y you have basically a quadratic expression. Now, you solve this quadratic equation. Uh, I still remember the formula for roots of uh, quadratic e uh, equation. That's 1, 2, minus 1. This is 2a minus b plus minus square equal uh, b square, which is 1, minus 4ac, which is minus 4, so it's minus 3. So, as you see, both roots are complex. So the next after that you have to fo you have to find this particular uh, two different equations actually. So it's minus one plus minus three uh, i, where i is square root of minus one, uh, the uh, imaginary unit divided by two. So you have to solve this one which is, again, you have to find a plus bi, which is in the force is equal to this particular equation. Not easy, definitely not easy, um, but doable, obviously. Um, I'm not sure, but I might, might actually go through all these calculations in my textual representation of this particular problem. I would like, actually, to offer you another solution which, um, I mean, ultimately, probably it's not, it seems to be a little bit longer, but to do this is really kind of not really very pleasant. So I think that second method would give you just a little bit better, maybe, feel about the whole thing. Maybe a little bit faster. So, to solve this particular problem, what I would like to do, I would like to represent this as a a uh, product of four different um, uh, quadratic polynomial of the second degree, which we can solve separately, because it's a if it's a product, then each one of these can be equal to zero, and each one of these will give some kind of solution. So what, what would I do is the following. Plus x to the fourth and minus x to the fourth. If I will do plus, I will have basically x to the fourth plus one square, right? Which is x to the eighth plus two x to the fourth plus one. But we have only one, so I have to subtract one. Equals two. Now we all know this formula. A square minus b square is equal to a minus b times a plus b, right? Everybody knows this formula a times a a square minus b times b minus mi mi minus b square a times b with a plus and a times b with a minus cancel each other so that would be this now using this formula 
Now, this is actually difference between two different squares, because 4 I can always represent as square, square, right? So that would be x4 plus 1 minus x squared times x4 plus 1 plus x squared. And then I will do basically the same thing. So it's equal to this I will put as x squared plus 1 squared. That will be x to the fourth plus 2x to the second plus 1. I need minus, so I have to subtract 3x squared instead of this. And instead of this, I will put x to the fourth plus 1, uh, sorry, x to the second plus 1 square. This is will be x to the fourth plus 2x to the second plus 1. But I need only 1, so minus x squared. And here I will continue doing exactly the same thing. This is the difference between two different... Uh, this is a square and this is b square. So it will be x squared plus 1 minus uh, square root of 3x squared times square plus 1 plus square root of 3 squared. Uh, no, why do I have to? No, I don't need these squares. That's it. X. This minus this square root of this, and this plus. Okay, this would be my left times this one would be x squared plus 1 minus x and uh, x squared plus 1 plus x. So what do I have? I have a product of 1, 2, 3, 4 different quadratic polynomials. It's equal to 0 which means either this one is equal to 0, or this, or this, or this. Each one of these is basically a quadratic equation, which you can solve, and you will have a little bit better, um, I would say, more pleasant way of solving this, even regardless of the fact that these are complex ro roots. Uh, even with this, it's still kind of faster than to, to get square, uh, no, the root of the fourth degree from some complex number. So it's a little bit longer before, but a little bit faster after. Okay, so these are two different solutions to this particular thing. And my third problem, again, I suggest you to either read it in the textual notes with this lecture on the website on unizor.com or just pause the lecture after I explain what the problem is and try to solve it yourself. That's the most important part. Solving the problems yourself is the purpose of the whole thing. But the, fa the fact that I'm presenting a solution, well, it's just maybe to um, increase the repertoire of different methodologies, but again, after that, you still have to solve problems. That what will give you the upper hand. So, my third problem is, I have to find such a number, such a number, let's call it an x, that its square is equal to sum of digits of this number in cube. And I'm talking about numbers from 10 to 99 only. So we are talking about the number which contains two digits, which means it's from 10 to 99. And if it's squared, it would be the same result as some of its digits in cube. But we have to find this number. Actually, there is only one. 
it's not a typical problem, right? But let's express it algebraically. Well, number which is from this to this, it has certain number of uh, tens and certain number of units, right? But let's call cer certain number of uh, tens x and certain number of units y. Then this number can be expressed as this one, 10x plus y. x and y are digits. x is supposed to be uh, from 1 to 9, and y is supposed to be from 0 to 9. And this one in square is equal to sum of the digits in cube. Well, this is an algebraic equation which we have to solve. And we do have a concrete um, values which x and y can take. It's only integer values and only from 1 to 9 for x and from, z to nine, from 0 to 9 for y. Well, it's not easy to do it algebraically. So we have to do it logically, right? Okay, let's call this number n, whatever that n is, I don't know. Okay, now, number n is supposed to be represented as any other number as a product of prime number, whatever the number of prime numbers is, I don't care. But at the same time, we see that number n actually is a cube of some number. X, y, x plus y. And if I will put x plus y as a representation in uh, as a product of prime number, I will have certain prime numbers as well. Now, this is in cube, which means each one of them is supposed to be repeated three times. So I can say that pi might be equal to q i cube, basically, right? And the k is supposed to be equal to n. So I have three times q1, 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 q2, 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 qn, qn, and qn. Okay. Okay, so this is the representation of n. On the other hand, it's a square of this number. So 10x plus y is also somehow represented. Okay. Now, but this is square. So n is supposed to be square of this, so it's supposed to be r1, r2, uh, sorry, r1, r1, square of this, r2, r2, rk, rk, and the k is supposed to be equal to n. So this representation is the same as this representation. But that's the same number, which means these are exactly the same thing. How can that be? Well, it can be only in one particular case. If you have six of these of the same value, and six of these, and are the third one also of the same value then they are repeated basically because you can only represent in one particular way the number as a product of prime numbers so these representations are supposed to be exactly the same so some prime number whatever the prime number is doesn't really matter how we which letter we use should repeat six times here otherwise it, 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 it doesn't really, you cannot really equalize them because it's supposed to be three times, some prime number is supposed to be 
three times here, but only two times here. So it must be exactly the same. So the number of these prime times, prime, number of times one particular prime number is repeated, should be six in this and should be six in that. Otherwise, it will not be possible to extract the root of the third degree and the root of the second degree and still have some prime numbers. Okay, so we can say that n is equal to some kind of a prime number to the power of 6 times some kind of a number. Okay. Now, what kind of prime number that may be? What is the maximum value of this, x plus y? Well, the maximum value is, for the number 99, it's 9 plus 9, so it's 18. 18 cubi is 5,832. So, what kind of a prime number p might be that in the power of 6 it will still be less than this? Well, just as an example, 5 to the power of 6 is equal to 15,625. It's greater than this one, which means this prime number cannot be 5. It should be less than that. Less than that is only 2 or 3. So we have to look for our number, this number, only among those which are multiple of 2 or 3. There are no other prime numbers in a representation of our number. I said, so its square is supposed to be divided by, um, by 2 square, actually. Uh, but the, the cube of this is supposed to be divided by 2 to the cube, which is 8. Now, so let's just consider 2 right now as a, as a candidate, which means that our number is supposed to be divisible by um, <coughs> number square is supposed to be divisible by 2 to the power of 6, right? So 10x plus y square is divisible by 2 to the power of 6, which is 64. Or some number itself is supposed to be divisible by 8. So, what kind of numbers are divisible by 8 in this particular um, interval? Well, it's uh, 16, 24, 32, 40, 48, 56, 64, 72, 80, 88, and 96. Now, what about some of these? some of these digits. Well, some of these digits is supposed to be, so the cube of this is supposed to be divisible by 2 to the 6, so the sum of digit is supposed to be divisible by p squared, which is by 4. So sum of digit is supposed to be divisible by 4. Now this sum of digit is 7, doesn't work. Uh, 2 plus 4, 6, not divisible by 4. 3 plus 2, uh, 5, not divisible by 4. 40 is divisible and 48 is divisible. This is 4, and this is 12, some of these. 56, 11, not good. 6 plus 4, 10, not good. 7 plus 2, 9, not good. This is good, this is good. And 9 plus 6 is 15, not good. So we have three ca uh, four candidates, 40, 48, 80, and 88. So square of this, now the sum of digits is 4, some of digits is 12, some of digits is 8, and some of digits is 16. So 40 square should be equal to 4 cube. No, not even close, obviously. This is uh, 1600, and 4 cube is 64. Doesn't work. 48 square is supposed to be equal to 12 cube. Uh, 48 square is, uh, well, 50 square is 2,500, so it's a little less than 2,500. 
12 cube, 12 by 12 is 144 times 12, it's like 1500, something like this, not even close. 80, uh, 80 square uh, is 6400, uh, sum of digits is 8 to the cube, 8 times 8, 64 by 8, well, something like 500, whatever, yay, not even close, not good. 88 square and 16 cube. Uh, this is 88 square, 90 square is 81, uh, hundred, so it's about 8,000. Now 16 cubes, 16 by 16 is 256, times 16, well, even times 20 it would be like 5,000, definitely not less, much less than 8,000. Uh, 8, not good. So the whole thing with 2 is not working. So we have only one remaining candidate as a prime number in the representation. which is 3, okay? So P is 3. So 10x plus y squared should be divisible by 3 to the 6, which means our number is divisible 3 to the 3rd by 27. How many numbers in this interval are divisible by 27. Well, it's 27, 54, and uh, what, 81, right? Sum of digits is 9. Sum of digits is 9. Sum of digits is 9. Now, 27 square and 9 cube. Well, this is basically 3 to the power of 3 to the power of 6. And this is 3 to the power of 2 to the power of 3 to the power of 6. So this is equal. And this is our solution. So 27 is good. Now the sum of uh, digits is 9 and still 9 and 9. And th these numbers are different. So obviously this square is not equal to this cube. And this square is not equal to this cube. So we found the solution. It's 27. Okay, that's it. Uh, read the notes for this lecture at unizor.com. You go to Math Plus and Problems and go to Algebra 04. So, thanks very much and good luck.